Hello, everybody. Madhuri here from NSN. Greetings and welcome to this skill talk with Mr. Satish Savant, who is the head inspection and surveying at Institute of Welding and Testing Technology, which is based in Thane in India. And this is one of the premier institutes which is specialized in various fields of welding. Let's hear it from Mr. Savant about the activities of the institute, how they are contributing to training and skilling, and also their association with Fronius. So welcome to this talk, Mr. Savant. I would like you to get started by telling us more about the institute and the activities. Thank you, Madhuri ji. It's nice talking to you. Uh, Institute of Welding and Testing Technology, I started in 2008 with the vision you know, to have a skill development in India and part of the um, more activities where engineers also can be trained along with the welders. Because most of the institute which is designed only to train the welders. Mm -hmm. Here we are doing a job for training engineers, even the managers, and we're doing most of the work to certify the organization who is performing welding. So there is a new latest standard like ISO 3834 certification or EN 1090 certification or the PED certification, USTAM certification for the organization. So we're helping them to achieve the international standards related to the welding. And I'm associated with the Fronius for last more than 20 years. When Fronius came to India, during that time I'm associated and I know Mr. Kamath also for last more than 20 years. Great. <laughs> it's a great pleasure to you know, work with the Fronius. They're having a best technology available with them. Mm -hmm. So I'd also visited uh, Fronius Austria. So it's a great to see them working so many people in R&D of Fronius. Yeah. So it is a great experience. Okay. Uh, could you tell us more yeah. about uh, the training uh, programs that are offered by your institute? Uh, how specialized are they? Is it like a super specialization in welding? That's the image I get when I read about it. Yeah. We're basically our main focus programs, creating welding inspectors. Mm -hmm for the industries. So we're having a program which is a certified welding inspector training program, as well as we're having a program which one is the international welding coordinators. Okay. Because in each department, we need a coordination, proper coordination, because the person who knows the welding and who is a, this is a, actually code in Europe. Mm -hmm. ENISO 14731 is a standard specified for the welding coordination personnel. So we're conducting special program as per the EN standard, EN ISO standards, and we're certifying them to work in an international level. Okay. So this is the first institute who has started this particular program in India. And we're trained so many engineers in India and abroad. Mm -hmm. We're doing similar activity in Southeast Asian countries like Singapore, Indonesia, Philippines, those countries, as well as we're having one institute at South Africa also, where we're running the similar program and yeah. creating more on welding coordinators. Mm -hmm. These guys, basically, they're having a role and responsibilities to talk, to train the welders, welding supervisors, as well as communicate the customer requirement. Mm -hmm. Any new jobs comes to the industries. The feasibility study is very, very important. Okay. So how to perform that feasibility study for the project related to the welding has been taught to them. Okay. And when we talk about the feasibility study, it starts much before doing welding. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then during welding also a lot of activities need to be done. So these activities are divided in three groups. Okay. What we need to do before welding, during welding and after welding. The person only knowledgeable about welding will not help for the industries. Mm -hmm. They need to know about the raw material, then the cutting operations, bending operations, as well as then uh, there is a age preparation and welding, joining them together. Then after joining, it is necessary to find out the quality of weld. 
saying very much be good is not enough to know about it. Mm -hmm. No, we need to carry out a lot of non-destructive testings okay. after welding, like visual inspection, diapenetrant test, X-ray, ultrasonic testing, somewhere where to go for the eddy current testing, boroscopy, those things need to get implemented according to the job specification. Mm -hmm. So this welding mm -hmm. coordination personnel should know about those things also. What is the acceptance standard for that particular job? Ultimately, that job will be, what is the application of the job? And those inspection technology should be aware by the welding coordination person. Okay. So the definition has changed mm -hmm. from the industry. No, they don't want only the inspector who can stop the work. They, they are finding the solution from the person. That's why this international standard has been introduced. And in India, Institute of Welding and Testing Technology is the first organization who has started this program for the welding coordination. Generally, there is an international level programs are available like international welding engineer, and, uh, international welding technologies, those programs are available. But everyone may, may not be eligible for that or it is not approachable for the Indian industries to go. So right. we are designing a program which can become economical also and reachable also. And we can talk to the guys with the vernacular language. Yeah. Because all these data is available, but those data is available in English or in Germany or in foreign languages. So our main idea to convert that in a simple language, in a vernacular language, which people will understand in our national language, and basically people should be able to implement on it. Yeah. So our idea is basically to make a bridging. Mm -hmm. you know, there is a university, they keep on so many institutions are available, they are training them, but then after training, they may not be viable to use in our industries. Because right. industry's need is different. Yeah. So bridging the gap is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So what we did, we designed a such a programs, like we're having a program for the welding metallurgy. We're having a program for the designers, welding engineers who can become a part of the design of the weld. Yeah. Then we're having so many programs for the non, we're having total 35 programs. And those are from the supervisory to the engineers. Okay. Similarly, we are having a program for welders also, hmm. but we don't conduct the normal program to weld uh, with the old conventional method. Whatever program we are conducting is more on the robotics, automation, because our idea to create a smart welder, because yeah. those olden days has gone now. Now, if you look at the machines which is available, which is all programmable machine, there are hundred programs can be stored with the machine. It is. Uh, all uh, machine which has been connected with the internet, those are smart machines. So we also need a smart welder. Yeah. So our main focus to create a small, smart welders, smart engineers who can update it with the technology. We are conducting more program on the robotics. Mm -hmm. Robotics certification program we are conducting. In India, we are the first organization which has started the robotics certification in India. Okay. Again, our all program is conducted again in the vernacular language. We wrote the books in Gujarati, Hindi, Tamil, all languages we are trying where the people can understand the technology, but we are not changing. Welding is not written in Hindi, some other word. We write down the welding, but normal man can read it, understand. Yeah. In bracket, we write the English also and Hindi and whatever Gujarati word will be there. We write in Gujarati and English mix. No? So common people can understand the subject and then they can get implemented. Yeah. So, uh, so my next question would be to understand, like you just mentioned smart welding, uh, which is obviously to do with like industry 4.0 kind of technologies. Uh, how do you think this is impacting the general scenario of when are, uh, welding? Are people aware of uh, such developments? Like you said, you are attracting people by using vernacular languages. So once they get trained, uh, is it like uh, getting trained before they enter into the job or in-service kind of a training? Uh, how does this training happen? See, we're having a program who comes out from the college. We're having a PG in welding technology. Yeah. Where we taught them from the, you know, 
starting from the base metal, cutting, welding, NDT, everything has been covered, whatever I had said before. No, we are designing a special PG program. So fresh engineers also coming for the program. Here, our major clients, if you look at, who is already working for 20, 25 years in the industries, they also come for the program. No, because we are conducting the program which is required for the industries. Mm -hmm. And we are having a certification which we provide to them, you know, they, which can be accepted by the worldwide. Okay. So our program is designed as well as certified worldwide. So there is a lot of people, even experienced guys also come for the program. Yeah. So it is for all level, from welders, welding supervisors, welding engineers, for managers, for the design engineers. So most of the guys even having 15, 20, 25 years, no, our students will be at the, my same age also. Okay. No participant. I will not say them because I'm also one of the students from the welding. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm also learning every day. Yeah. And last 33 years, I'm in this particular field. And I'm also learning every day from this particular, you No, know, like I'm interacting with you. I'm learning from you also. Yeah. That's yeah. so nice uh, to say that you are a continuous learner and that's I think is what is important today in terms of skill development also. Continuous skilling, upskilling, that's very essential. Uh, so uh, my last point uh, which I would like you to elaborate on is I think our audience will be very happy to know more about. Uh, you had mentioned about international standards uh, for welding and uh, also uh, something to do with inspection and other things. Uh, which is about quality. So people, when they go uh, to other countries, uh, you know, from India, when Indians go and work abroad, so how do they, uh, you know, uh, keep up to the standards? How do they make sure that when they take up a welding job, they meet all these things? So could you please tell us in very simple ways, how does one ensure that we meet global standards through, you know, in all these areas, like uh, how the inspection happens, how the quality is maintained? Yeah. Our main slogan, the scholars and dollars. Mm -hmm. you know, we also believe that the scholars and dollars. So in that scholars should know how to earn the dollars for that. They should also know about the codes and standards and specification, which has been used in the worldwide. Mm -hmm. you no, know, we're doing consultancy to companies like Ford, which is US best you known for them on the robotics. We're doing a lot of program for the Ford and uh, other uh, international companies also, hmm. like Bombardier, Siemens, ABB. So definitely when we're talking about the requirement, you know, our engineer need to be know about the international standard yeah. so they can be accepted by anyone. Mm -hmm. And India also need to go to that level only. Yeah. You know, whatever the bridges, whatever the structure we are fabricating or whatever machineries we are manufacturing, those should be also world class. Mm -hmm. To become a world class, we should be aware about what is the acceptance level in the international market. Yeah. For that, all the programs, like we are following from the good standards like AWS, ASME, API, EN, ISO standards, which I had mentioned before, yeah. like ISO 3834, EN 15085, EN 1090. These are the international standard. Today, if you want to manufacture the product, so we should know what is the acceptance level in the world market. And yeah. those details have been given by these core standards and specifications. Mm -hmm. So it is necessary to learn. So all our program are updated to the international standard only. Mm -hmm. whatever we train like if there is a latest revision comes in 2021 we are aware about it mm -hmm. and we design our program to update the technology our trainers goes abroad and they get trained themselves and then whatever we learn we try to pass on that knowledge to industry mm -hmm. and if possible we are, as I mentioned to explain them in a simple way where the, our uh, engineers can understand. Okay. So communicate them very well. Okay. That is the idea. Okay, great. Uh, so, uh, is there something else you would like to tell us uh, by way of a message to our audience, maybe the young people who are very interested in pursuing welding as a career and also getting into specializations 
and advanced courses like the ones you are offering what would be your message to them yeah my message to them is basically joining is required welding is a special process and there is a very few competition for them young generation mm. and as india will be developing country the more potential in india no i want people should go abroad also they should earn in you know, dollars and euros and all and today also the scenario if there is a one engineer from it department applies to the european country and someone applies from the welding field the first visa will be given to the who has applied from the welding field and there is a lot of practical things which is needed so they should practice it properly and there is a huge potential no as if you look at to the per capita consumption of steel in india today is very low comparative to the developing countries yeah if you go to the us and all developed countries their cons- consumption is going from 200 to 300 kg per capita consumption mm. where our consumption is only 68 so you can see the scope for the young engineers when this kind of fabrication and the development today most of the companies they don't have the welding engineers with them okay they don't have welding coordinators with them and welding is a special process so definitely there will be and people started understanding now when the bridges collapse then people understand what is the importance of the welding yeah. so we should not wait for that right. to any accident to place we should go on a preventive mode and our young engineer should take this challenge to learn more about the welding metallurgy learn about the new technology and change that scenario you no know, looking at welding generally people will have a perception you no know, it is very difficult job or the lot of safety kind of girls are doing welding yes. i had conducted a long back program in uh, philippines uh, maybe in uh, 94 that time also in philippines out of 20 candidate 15 girls doing welding Mm. and even in south africa where i'm conducting program there is a 70 to 80 percent girls are doing welding okay and we are trying to it means what i want to say doing girls are doing the welding is it is not difficult yeah. or the, the perception which we are having i am in this welding field for last 33 years okay so there is a per- perception is wrong and people why they made this perception god knows about it but it is a really clean neat job we should not be afraid about the welding no people get afraid about it i don't know why it is hmm. it is a skill job yeah. it is even welding engineer is highly reputed and highly demand in a field yeah so i request to all this uh, new engineers to look as a career in the weld but knowing only about the welding will not help as i said they should know about the cutting they should know about the welding they should know about the entity they should go to the special processes like painting technology because nothing goes without painting from the industry yeah so, but then they should complete the cycle yeah. if someone is only specialized in welding again he will have a limitation mm-hmm. so total knowledge total certification is required for the cutting welding ndt and painting technology then the demand will be there otherwise no with limited field again they will have a limited scope for them for the new engineers right i think that's very important you have brought in many other aspects and many other fields and dimensions uh, in other words multi skilling is the word we use for all these things yeah yeah, yeah. i think that's very essential today for any young person who's looking for careers Uh, so i would like to uh, thank you for spa- uh, sparing your time and talking to us today and the wonderful example you. you gave about uh, being proactive and not waiting for something to happen and then start responding to it i think on this note i would like to close this conversation thanks a lot for talking to me uh, mr savant i'll be in touch with you thank you thank you thank you madhuri ji thank you very much thank you goodbye